All right, it's time to talk about tool tips. So I've got my Chrome extension open. I'm gonna click create new content. Now it's asking me to navigate to the page where I actually wanna create this flow. And this is really important specifically with um, tool tips and driven actions because you wanna make sure that the flow starts in the location that you want this actual flow to kick off. So I'm actually gonna navigate us into the inbox tab. And this is where I want my tool tips to actually start appearing. So I'm going to click start here. I'm going to create a flow. And this is going to be my tool tip series. I'm going to change this to my theme. And I'm going to click create. Now, tool tips are really great for providing contextual guidance in a certain situation. They're really good at giving users information, and this is critical. They're not used to get users to accomplish things, and that is where driven actions come in. They're very similar looking patterns. However, they are very different. So we wanna focus tool tips in places that users are gonna need a little bit more contextual information. Let's go ahead and open one up. Now, I'm gonna ask, uh, decide which template I want. If you have seen my series on slide outs and modals, you'll know that you can change these templates and then save them, and then they will appear in your saved template section. Um, that is entirely up to you. So we're just gonna go ahead and start with this default one. Now, what you see here is a selector tool. And what I'm actually doing here is selecting the CSS selector that's going to uh, be the focal point of my tooltip. So let's actually start here with the compose button, for example. So I can choose um, exactly what I'm hoping to select. I'm gonna go ahead and select this right here. So now I've got my actual um, pattern here, exactly the same as all of the different UI patterns. This can be completely customized. You can modify it however you want. You can add and remove columns. Uh, let's imagine I don't want all of this text here. I can delete this with my face in the way. I can delete this and modify it now. I can add uh, maybe a section for an emoji and a section for um, some text here. And so now I can absolutely just make Make sure that I'm giving my users the information that they need. So this is um, here is where you would start to compose a message. Now, what I mentioned before about how tooltips are different from driven actions is really critical here. If I wanted my user to actually click compose and start working on this email, I would want to use a driven action here. If I just want to provide my users information about this button and then take them to another tool or another piece of uh, something else on this page, that's when I would use a tooltip. So things that are really critical here is this actual got it button. If you remove the button, in a tooltip like this, now this flow will no longer be able to advance because the tooltip only knows that its job has been done if you click got it or I understand or next or however, you know, the, to go to next step basically. So what would end up happening is if you turn this button off and then you add additional steps, the user can't advance through the flow and the flow would break. So we wanna make sure that with tool tips, you always have a button that allows them to either go to the next step or end the flow. So that's first thing. A couple of other things that are valuable, like I said, we've kind of covered this in other, in other videos. Um, so we're going to focus in on the settings. First, you're choosing your, your UI pattern. Like I said, we're working on tool tips now, but you can change it to a driven action if you do decide, actually, wait, I do want them to click on compose. Let's make this a driven action. And I'll talk more about driven actions in the driven action series, of course. You can modify the width of this box to make sure it fits kind of what you're hoping for. You can add a time delay, same thing in modals. Now we are looking at our element. This is the element that I've selected this button. And the auto selection for this is um, generally pretty good, but you, some of you guys have some really complex platforms. Sometimes you have dynamic CSS selectors. So there are additional options here for um, your selectors and you can use manual element detection. And depending on what tool you've selected, you'll see these modifications here. This is um, the CSS, 
CSS selector um, identification code. You can also use what you'll notice here is that there are 28 actual buttons that have this code here. So if I need to add additional parameters to make sure that the tool is always choosing the right one, I can also add text and include. So I can look specifically for compose. And now if I click out here, what you'll see now is there is only one other tool on this page that has that name. So it'll just a little bit safer bet here. So those are a couple of things that are really nice. Next, you have your placement. This placement is um, currently set to default, which it's going to find the most appropriate place for this tool to appear um, as compared to this button. However, you can change this. So perhaps I want it at the bottom um, or for some reason, maybe I do want it on the left hand side. It just depends on what's going to make the most sense for this tool. So you can just click around and see what works. Um, also, this is the location where if you've chosen the wrong element to place this on, you're going to change this here so you can reselect. Let's imagine I actually want it on inbox here. And so now I've reselected my element. I can also slide this over or um, further away. It completely depends on how your platform, um, you just want to make this as uh, visually appealing as possible. The next thing that we've got here is your um, behavior. It, you can choose to only show this um, when the element is visible, or you can allow it to try to find the element. If you have a platform that scrolls um, vertically and you have a tool that's a little bit below the scroll line, right, the fold, you can actually choose that um, the, to try to find the element so that the user will be automatically scrolled down to that location. And so that's one of the ways that you can do this. One last thing that I didn't mention previously is this continue flow if element does not exist. This is really great for, for example, if you've got menu items that maybe administrators have additional menu items, you can build the same flow for both user types, admins and general users. Um, though not always my recommendation. I think splitting these flows is better, but you could have a little guider on e like a tooltip on each of the different pieces. And if the general user doesn't have the admin panel, it'll just skip over that additional field and go directly onto the next one. So that's an option for you. So you would just select this continued flow if element doesn't exist and it would skip this step and go on to the next one. So that's all of the different options here in the individual settings. Now we'll pop into the group settings. So like I said, with skippable steps, same thing as modals, you can remove that X button, allow forcing the user to continue to work through this flow. You can also turn on your backdrop. This is really great to make sure that your users are focusing in on exactly what you want them to be looking at. I really like having this backdrop turned on when I'm giving users a really quick guided walkthrough. Um, but this is just personal preference. Then you've also got your beacon type. Right now you'll notice that this is a little triangle, but I can change that. I can make it a line. I can make it a line with a little ball at the end, and I can also use a hotspot. So now what you'll notice, you can't really see it. Let me see if I can change the color for you. Let me slide this over. Um, we'll make it a little bit like this and we'll change this to this so you can really see it. And what this is going to do is actually pulsate on that location once we've started. So this can be um, kind of really, really graphic for your users, but I'm going to leave it right here for now and <laughs> I'll leave my color the way that I have it. It doesn't really matter. But um, the next thing that you've got is your box. So you can remove that carrot altogether if you don't want it there. Um, you can also change your corners, uh, add and move, like determine if you want a shadow behind the, the text box or not, um, or if you just want it to be solid like this. And then you also do have an option for a border. Um, so these are just all kind of settings that allow you to really customize and make sure that this tooltip is gonna look the way that you want it to look. So just to give you a full understanding of um, how tooltips can work all together in a group, I'm gonna add a couple more just so that you can see them. So let's go back to navigation. Now I can either click add here or I can, because I'm gonna use like tools, I'm gonna to use more tool tips. I can just click right here, add to group. And let's say I've put the first one on the um, inbox option. So the next one I'm gonna put on, for example, the um, let's say sent option. Um, and then we're gonna add one more. We'll go back to navigation and we're gonna add just one more one so you can kind of see this process to group and we'll put it on drafts. Great. So now 
What you'll probably notice is that all of my group settings apply to all of these individual steps because I, they're, obviously they're all part of the same group. If I wanted to create another group uh, that had a different look, different settings, you could also just then add it and add it outside of the group. So, all right, so now we've built these three individual tooltips. And what this allows you to do is show your users a couple of highlights on individual pages. A word of caution, I don't recommend really using tooltips um, as often as sometimes we want to. The reason for this is because users get tired of walkthroughs and, and tours. They want to be able to get their hands in and actually accomplish tasks, and that's where driven actions come in. So in the driven action video, definitely check out and see how valuable driven actions can be when you want to explain something, but actually allow your user to interact with it. So I'll check, I'll meet you in the driven action video, or if you came from the driven action video, this is your tooltip section. Use them when you feel it's appropriate, but maybe go a little light on the, uh, the tooltip train. Have a great day.